All right, everybody, welcome to the April 17th, 2024 meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, we have our work cut out for us tonight. Tonight is our big night of looking at all the projects, the nine projects that we have had a chance to read proposals, uh, ask questions of the applicants in a written form, uh, hear the applicants present to us, um, hear public comment about the applications, and now is our night to deliberate and make recommendations to city council. Uh, before we do that, we always open it up for general public comment. Is there anyone out there other than committee members who wish to speak about anything having to do with the CPC? You can raise your hands or just speak up. Sarah, you see anybody? I do not. You do not, okay, enough of that. Um, Sarah sent us minutes a little on the late. Oh, they're so late. <laughs> so I don't know if folks had a chance to look at the November 15th minutes. Is that a no? Anybody else with a yes? Yes, I read them. Okay. Chris, yeah. Okay. So, Julie, if it's all right with you, we'll just go ahead. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of November the 15th? I think Kevin had a motion, yes. And a second. Chris, thank you. Any discussion on the November 15th minutes? Okay, Sarah, we have to roll call on this. Yes, so roll call on that, Kevin? Yes. Chris Tate? Yes. Chris Hellman? Yes. Julia? Yes. Martha? Yes. And Brian? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. All right, and thank you, Sarah, for that. Um, chair's report, just a couple of uh, things. One is, um, I just thought I would remind all of us as ambassadors as we are for the Community Preservation Committee and the Community Preservation Act to remind uh, our friends, our colleagues, anyone we come in contact with that community preservation um, funds and money can only be used for certain projects, historic preservation and recreation and uh, affordable housing um, and open space uh, in this time of fiscal uncertainty and fiscal anxiety and fiscal angst. I think people can get very anxious when they see the potential of school, schools cutting positions. And then they say, well, why are we funding this? And it just, we need to remind folks um, if it comes up in conversation, uh, what our mandate is and who we are able and not able uh, to fund. Um, so I thought I would just I would just mention that. Uh, I, I live pretty near Laurel Street. Um, I don't know if folks have had a chance to go drive past that lately, but a lot of work is being done there. So that's exciting. A lot of tree work and um, cuttings and removal and prep work getting ready for that ambitious housing project. So it's always good to see um, uh, the 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 projects that we have funded so diligently coming together and beginning to uh, to move forward. So so that's a good thing. Um, so again, we have our work cut out for us tonight. We certainly do. We have three point six something million dollars in requests uh, available to us. This round is seven hundred and seventy four thousand. Uh, let's remember that of that. 774, 169, almost 170,000 is locked up in the historic uh, reserve. So that can only be spent for historic preservation stuff. Um, two of those projects are quite large. Obviously, Memorial Hall coming in at 2.7 million and the Ryan Road Playground coming in at 507,000. Uh, we have the option to bond or uh, uh, bond for both of those projects. Uh, Sarah's gonna take us through, or walk us through some of the bonding discussion and some financial stuff as well. And she presented or sent to committee members um, scenarios on both a $1.5 million bonding and a $2.7 million bonding. And two different scenarios, or actually four different scenarios for each of those. Um, 
one looking at five-year bonding, the other looking at 10-year bonding. Uh, and of those, like with the five-year bonding, one looking at holding the, giving out the principal in equal amounts and the second one sort of front-ending that. So Sarah, can you give us a financial overview and go through those bonding options with us so we sure make sure we're all on the same page in terms of understanding um, sure. um, so let what me, the possibilities are for bonds. Yeah. Um, so let me share my screen with the spreadsheet that I sent out. So um and what I had sent to everybody just to read it for open meeting law purposes was um, attached, please find the schedule showing the estimated and proposed debt service on one and a half million and 2.7 million Memorial Hall restoration bonds. Uh, and that was for five and 10 year scenarios run at estimated rates of two and three quarter and 3% respectively. We don't quite know what they would be at this point, but that uh, our bond council thought that that was a good estimate. Uh, so that would assume equal principal and level debt service payment structures for different options. The schedules also assume the bonds are structured with a long first coupon with the first payment of debt service not until September 15th, 2025. Um, it's important to note that the interest rates employed in these calculations are estimates and subject to change. This is based on September 2024 borrowing. So city council, if they approve it, would, would um go out to bond in September, but we wouldn't make the first payment until the following fiscal year. And these certainly aren't the only borrowing options, but they're presented for discussion and consideration. And the playground could potentially also be bonded for a maximum five-year term, regardless of the amount that's borrowed. And that's due to the, the limited life of the, the playground equipment and the surface. And then um, the budget report shows um, details on the impact of borrowing on future funding rounds. So it, I didn't enter all of them in, I just did one for an example, but you can enter any expected payment, so both the principal and interest from one of the debt schedules in each fiscal year to see what the impact would have on available funds that round. Um, so you can see that these, the FY24 and 25 payments are not applicable, but then if we, uh, in, if we started bonding for, with a 2.7 million from that, 10 year equal principal amount, then this is the amount that we would have left to spend on the right with um, with that additional payment factored in. And that that does in, incorporate um, state match at about the same percentage that we're receiving now that is subject to change, um, but it didn't seem to make sense to leave the state match out completely. So it, assuming that we're gonna be, be receiving about the same as we are now, that, that's what we would be looking at. So any questions or thoughts on, on that? And as the committee talks this through, I can run additional scenarios in the background and see what that would look like. Uh, Sarah, can you remind us of um, column G, what we are currently bonding at and just those, the, the uh, implications of that? Yeah, so, that, so that's reflected in um, this estimated amount remaining to spend on regular projects. So these are these amounts in column G are the tail ends of the payments for the Pulaski Park Overlook project, Florence Field construction, and the, um, the just a few small, very small payments for the Bean Allard Farm acquisition um, where F Florence Fields was developed. So after we subtract that from uh, the, the revenues each fiscal year, then this is what's left to spend. Uh, questions for Sarah. Uh, Martha. Uh, yes, Sarah. Um, how how does the bonding affect the reserves each year? So, for example, um, if we were to bond the playground, um, and that falls into, say, the recreation um, reserve, uh, does that um, each year we're expending money or paying that um, back, you know, paying that down is, is what we're paying down taken out of the reserve for that each year 
from the recreation reserve. Sure. So it, it could be that would be an allowable expense. It hasn't been done that way in the past. The bonding amounts have always come out of the undesignated fund. Okay. Um, but but we could uh, take it from the reserve accounts first. That would be an option. Okay. But it can come out of undesignated. It can. Yeah. And that's that's always how it, it has been done. Okay. Much. Great. Thank you. Uh, Chris Hillman. Unmute. There we go. Um, thank you, Sarah. I I didn't actually see this, so I'm going to follow up with you later because I really would like to look at this table. But um, ha actually, have this table. Um, but looking at column I, percentage of bonding capacity. Um, so refresh my memory, but I'm I'm I, as I understand it, we're only allowed to dedicate a certain amount of our anticipated cash to servicing debt. Um, how is that determined, what that percentage is? How is that determined? Yeah, so that that's a good point. Thanks for bringing that up, Chris. So this is our, so column, so column C is the total CPA income projection. So for FY24, this is actual, this isn't, uh, right. this isn't projected. So what we brought in in local revenue was 1.7 million. So we can't bond on anticipated state revenue. That's that's yep. not a given. Uh, we, we can't factor in making payments for money that we we won't actually be receiving. Right. Um, so 10% uh, each goes into the set aside accounts. This was based on the assumption that we would be making the, the debt pay, debt service payments from the reserve accounts and not from the uh, from the undesignated fund and not from the reserve accounts. So assuming that's the case, then uh, the bonding capacity is what's reflected here. So really, column I is 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 the um, is our cap. Yeah. So well, it's kind of it's a little bit misleading, I suppose. But um, no, but yeah. Yeah. So so right so right now we're we we're bonding tw uh, twenty one percent of our local revenue right. for the year. Uh, right. So we can't spend more money than we're taking in on, on debt yep. service. Okay. All right. That's great. Thank you. Other questions for Sarah in terms of bonding scenarios? Um, just a couple comments that I had. Um, Sarah presented with uh, to us a uh, five years and 10 years. But we can go whatever we want. I mean, we can do uh, five, six, seven, eight years. So she just gave us some some scenarios there, and we can bond however much uh, we want as long as it doesn't exceed that that percent. Julia, do we make the decision on the bonding time frame, or are we recommending bonding and city council makes that decision? I'm a little confused about that. Yeah. Process. So uh, the financial orders would read that the community preservation committee. Uh, recommends that this amount be allocated to the project and then would authorize the city to uh, bond for a period of up to whatever you decide for that project. And then it's it's a combination of city council and, and bond council. I mean, they, they may go out to bond and get a more favorable rate for a, a lower term, so might go with that one. So it, although you authorize up to 10 years, for example, they might do five based on financial circumstances. So really, the the entire spreadsheet is it's one possibility, but but we're we're not making the decision that kind of out there. Yeah, I'm not the final I'm decision. I'm, yeah, I, if city council agrees with the recommendation, then they would approve the the financial order as written, uh, and then the finance director would work with our bond council to actually make the borrowing happen. And the example I gave of 10 versus five would probably wouldn't happen. It would be maybe 10 or eight or something like that. Um, but but in the past, the bond council and city council have always gone out to bond for the, the period that was allowed up to by the, the CPC. Kevin? Uh, yes, sir, if I remember correctly, uh, toward the end of our last meeting, um, uh, you conveyed that the playground was bondable. Um, would the same uh, 
proportions. Uh, you didn't run a scenario in your table for bonding the playground, but would that be proportionately uh, the same as what you outlined for? Um, the, yeah, so um, because those scenarios are more limited, um, I, I didn't ask the finance director to have bond council put that together. Um, but if the if the committee decided to recommend half a million in borrowing, for example, at a 3% interest rate, we could change it to 2.75, um, then this is about what the, the debt service schedule would look like. Okay. So not not as complicated. Um, and even if it's if it's one or the other, if it's um, level or, or loaded, it wouldn't change that much. Um, but if, if that's something the committee really wants to look at, I could have bond council do that before the next meeting. Very good, thank you. Other questions for Sarah? Um, I'd like to re-ask you, Sarah, and I and and I think I remember your answer to me. Um, City Council appropriated four hundred and something thousand dollars already to Memorial Hall for emergency restoration stuff, but 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 they have not come back to us now with a two point seven million minus four hundred thousand and have reduced the ask. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. So I'm just I'm trying to pull up the answers to the CPC's questions, but. Um... Pat McCarthy and indicated that it likely would, you know, the that four hundred thousand plus allocation from stabilization funds would likely have some effect on the the overall project and reduce the amount of the CPA ask. But he wasn't able to say exactly by how much, you know, not knowing when the project would happen, exactly how much the CPC would allocate in you know, partial funding versus full funding. Uh, in potential contingencies and unknowns, he wasn't confident enough to say like yes, chop that exact amount off the project. So as always, if we were to vote in favor of this, we, we could say up to 2.7 million in the hopes that it would be actually less than that. Uh, correct. And then any unspent funds on the project would be returned to the CPA. Yeah, so he had said, uh, so will the emergency repairs just approved from stabilization funds reduce the CPA request? Uh, yes, but to what extent is unknown until the engineer gets deeper into the work, there are still unknowns. So there's there's a lot up in the air, essentially, at this point. Chris Hellman. Sorry, I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to speak and not monopolize the time. So jump in if you're if you've got a burning thing. But I wanted to follow up on what what Brian was just saying. Um, first. I'm going to add a piece of info and and Martha correct me if you're wrong if you think I'm wrong um when we did the the tour of Memorial Hall um and this subject came up and he was showing us some of the work that was being done in the basement um, on, with that 400,000 I got a feeling I I had again I got the distinct impression that that was a pretty fluid number that there was an expectation that it wasn't going to hold up and the the question the question was more of how much was it going to move rather than whether it would move. And, and it had to do with the fact that once they started digging holes, they weren't exactly sure what they were going to find. Um, one of the things had to do, for instance, with the quality of the drainage that they were looking at. So I, I just want to put that on the table. Um, and again, Martha, if, if that's not your impression, please, please let me know what you think. Um, and then the other part of it is um, if we opt to recommend bonding at a certain level, and our hope is that um, we're going to bond enough and that there may be, you know, uh, you know, less spent. Does that really affect? I mean, when you take out a loan, the fact that you don't spend it all doesn't change the quality of the, the quality and the cost of the loan. Right. We've still borrowed it. So what I'm saying is, is that if, if we if we if we recommend bonding uh, two point seven million dollars. We're going to pay off two point seven million, and if they don't spend all two point seven of million of it, where does that extra money go? Uh, so it's never happened before with a bonded project. Every every project that's ever gone out to bond has been, you know, been, they've known enough about the finances at the time that that it went out to be able to expend all of that. 
Um, and they were they were all much larger projects that could have found a, a way to expend those funds if needed. And I'm sure that's the case with this one as well. Uh, but if there were an, an instance where uh, some funds were unspent, they would be returned to the uh, to the CPA reserve accounts. Does that answer your question, Chris? Yep. Yep. It does. Thank you. Uh, let me. Any questions for Sarah? Me? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been, I don't know if this is the time, but just like I was trying to connect with City Council about the capital improvement program. Or, and I see that Memorial Hall has some allocations in there that I'm generally wondering about um, in conversation with this, but I don't have like an articulate question about it yet, if that makes sense, um, depending on how the conversation goes. But I am wondering about that piece as well, just seeing that there's some money this for fiscal year 25 and going forward. Um, Chris Tate? Any question? No, no. question. Uh, Kevin? Uh, yeah, since this is my first year, I don't know if this kind of discussion has come up before, but when a city building is uh, part of the, the seat of government, which you would expect normal operating requirement would be you got to keep it healthy enough to operate. Um, is the, and then in, in this case, it also has um, historic aspects to it. Um, has there ever been a discussion about how we separate what is truly appropriate for CPC money? Um, it's, presumably it, it, one can make an argument that, well, CPC money should be directed toward the historic aspects of uh, governmental buildings, not just the uh, fundamental, you know, all buildings, need maintenance, all buildings need uh, repairs from time to time. Um, and if it's not really because it's historic nature, can we say, oh, that's the proper place to spend CPC money? And so I'm, I'm raising that question since I haven't heard it discussed in the couple of meetings that I've been part of. There, you wanna tackle that? Yeah, I can start and then maybe Martha can add to it as well. So the um, CPA funds can only be spent on historic preservation projects if the work is consistent with the Secretary of the Interior standards for whatever type of work it is, be it restoration or, or rehabilitation. Um, so everything that's included in the Memorial Hall request would be consistent as far as I can tell. And they would have a consultant on board to ensure that it is uh, with, the, with the standards for rehab. But you know, if if the city were to propose something that you know, just wasn't within that CPA realm or was inconsistent with those standards, that's not something that would be able to be funded with CPA. And the city, I, I guess to, to add to that, the city also has a, a host of other uh, buildings and assets that are not historic resources and for which CPA funding is not an option. Uh, Martha? Yeah, I, I think that Sarah stated that correctly. Um, and I think we probably have a longer discussion about this maybe later, but um, to me more the question is, the question is more that um, if there were no Community Preservation Act in Northampton, um, how would these buildings get preserved and taken care of? So that's the, that's my question. Any other, is that, is that satisfactory, Kevin? Does that help uh, at all? Yes, it helps. I, it, I, I'm still um, wrestling with the notion that the government has a responsibility to fund itself and the places where it has to operate from. Um, and so it, it seems like some of these expenses, even if they do fit the criteria uh, as being um, fundable for as historic uh, buildings, 
uh, some of that ought to be city responsibility out of normal operating funds anyway. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, seems like when money's short, people come looking for wherever they can find it. And the uh, idea that the whole project was applied for 2.7 million and that that hasn't been reduced, it seems like there's some fishing going on. And I'm, without clear criteria about where the, the, the our priorities ought to be. Um, it still feels a little uncomfortable to me to uh, pay the whole thing out of out of our money, whether it's this year or future years. Uh, Chris Hellman, I think you've struggled with this. Do you want to? I was um, about to jump in there, and 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 I I I hear Martha when she's saying we may want to do this a little bit later on, but but um, I'm right with you, Kevin. I you know, and the way I frame it is. Are we responsible from a historic preservation standpoint when when the preservation we're doing is the result of deferred maintenance over an extended period of time? Um, because we're not supposed to be funding operating costs, okay? And I think maintenance is an operating cost. Um, and uh, I very much dislike the feeling that I have gotten on a couple of occasions as I thought about this, that I'm being presented with a fait accompli um, by the city who for probably good reasons, but almost certainly budget reasons, have allowed a backlog of, of maintenance to accumulate to the point where now the buildings have are 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 distressed. And and Memorial Hall is the focal point of this discussion, but it's not the only building that's that's part of this debate for me. And um while we're gonna decide about how we're gonna deal with Memorial Hall, um I very, I very strongly need to be clear in my thinking and express that clearly to the city about how we're going to deal with this going forward, because I really am uncomfortable with having to do historic preservation for what I, what I believe is, is only partially the result of, of, you know, a historic need. And, and, and uh, I haven't, I haven't figured out how I'm going to express that. Um, but this is the part of the conversation I think cuts into the Memorial Hall portion. Um, but I'm with you, Kevin. I I am I am not comfortable with the with the divide as I see it. I think it's okay to continue the conversation along this line as long as we're we're here now, Julia. Yeah, I really appreciate you raising it because that that the word deferred maintenance is what keeps coming up as I read through that proposal and that that's really problematic for me because what we're doing is creating this incentive to keep on deferring maintenance because you can always dip back into the pool of, well, now it's, now it's deferred maintenance on a historic building. Therefore it's historic. Uh, it, it, it fits the, it fits the rationale for it being a historic uh, preservation or, or, or uh, a rehabilitation. And I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned about that. It's, it, you know, I, I wouldn't, uh, I can think of all kinds of examples of things I wouldn't do with my children that are very, very similar, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to give this to you now because now you're going to believe that you can always come to the same pot. And, and I'm, I'm really, uh, it, I, I, I have concerns. Okay. So that's one side of the concern is the deferred maintenance. And I think what's hard is when I read through that, that proposal that they have, I can't, I can't dissect out deferred maintenance from it's a building that needs some rehabilitation because older buildings periodically are are in need of some some rehabilitation. You know, I I love the um the work that Historic Northampton is is looking at. Is it deferred maintenance over that long of a time to to reconstruct the the barn? I mean, if it was you know sitting in in the hands of someone for a long time, maybe. Um, it feels different though. It feels really, really different with this particular project. So uh, I'm in the same place you're at, Chris and Martha. I appreciated uh, the question that you threw out there and just left in the air, you know, about, about, the, about this project. Um, this one's a struggle. And, and then I gotta say, part of the struggle for me is that I'm still looking at what we funded in the first cycle. And now I'm looking at a larger pool of money, which is cycle one plus cycle two and all the projects that came in and saying, 
would I have prioritized this differently if I knew all the projects coming in and the total amount of money we had to give out to all the projects that we have? And just wondering about this whole process of round one and round two, because we know there is a clear advantage to being an applicant in round one. Round two is a disadvantage. So I'm, you know, looking at the projects, looking at the cost, looking at the nature of the projects and really thinking, do we need to look at our own process again? That's all, just that's my, that's my week of thinking about this. Thanks, Julia. Let me. Yeah, um, I appreciate what everyone has said and I've gotten that sense over the week. So I'm kind of been thinking about it. And I think for me, like even just seeing that like in the capital improvement program where these kinds of things belong theoretically, like next year, the main commitment seems somewhere between 300 and 350,000 300, and $350,000. Like I also feel a little bit like even the best version of it, like taking on more of a commitment than the city's even taking on in this year, in this fiscal year. Um, so I'd consider like matching a capital improvement program commitment that they're making or that kind of thing just to, you know, it's like a, act in good faith and, you know, we will work as hard as you will um, or less hard or, you know, I know I hear the arguments for like, that's not our job as CPA, but um, just thinking about how to be thoughtful about this and and sort of meet the city where they're clearly at. And if they're committing three, $400,000, you know, Bonding that feels a lot less intimidating than bonding um, 2.7 million, especially with what um, Julia just said about, I've been thinking about the last round and this round and stuff too. And, um, you know, they can come back <laughs> if they're spreading their commitments over five years. Um, you know, there's ways we could do that too. If we're really trying to like only focus on the historic piece of it. Um, Cause yeah, there is a lot of like infrastructural stuff and how to piece out the historic thing versus the infrastructure thing. I'm not sure that's simple. And maybe Martha, you have more ideas about times you've seen something that was clearly like not a historic thing and more just like infrastructural or whatever. But yeah, that's my framework coming into this conversation is looking at that. Thanks, Lemmy. Sort of, um strayed from the to bond or not to bond or or questions about bonding and finances but that's that's fine uh any more general questions for sarah about finances and sarah if you can flag julia's comment about uh is our process the the best process uh, given what given her reflections on um the clear advantage that perhaps a round one has to a round two. And as we redo our annual plan or our five-year plan or whatever it's called, as we're doing that, that's that's not forget Julia's comment and, and circle back to that. Um, anything else for finances? Okay, so here we go. Um, and again, for those folks listening in, we have 3.6 million dollars in requests. We have 774,000 available to us uh, unless we bond. And we have the ability to bond two projects, both the Ryan Road Accessible Playground and the uh, Memorial Hall uh, project. Um, Ryan Road would have to be bonded for five years or less and Memorial Hall, there's no limitations to that. Um, one thing we did last time, I think this is Julia's suggestion, was to just go around and have people weigh in initially on where they are with these nine projects and to see if we have some immediate um, uh, consensus, might be too strong a word, or or uh, more or less agreement on, on, on some of them. Uh, so this is just general comments on the nine projects before us that, 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 that people have. Uh, and of course, the two big ones are the playground and the and Memorial Hall. But let's not forget there's seven other worthy applicants out there that have asked us for money. Um, so what I am suggesting is that we just go do a go around, 
people comment on where they are with these nine projects in a sort of general way. And if they're feeling really strongly that yes, 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 yes to these, and I don't think so for these. Um, and then we can begin to get a sense of where we are and then and then start to tackle some of the more difficult ones. Um, does that make sense? Does that sound good for folks? Yes? Okay. Um, so Julie, this was sort of your idea last time. So put you on the spot and you can you can begin this time. That's very funny. Thank you. As I had a feeling it was coming to me. So I was like, let me get my projects all opened up again. So I'm kind of going back and forth between uh, uh, the Zoom and, and uh, that. Um, OK, so I'll start with Habitat for Humanity uh, because we have funded them in the past. They've been, a they've been very strong in, in coming to us for money. And I feel like, uh, again, uh, a, a strong application for a three bedroom single family home. So I would, I would support the Habitat application. Um, uh, the next one, which was um, uh, the, the monitoring agent, is that the next one? I'm not sure, I, I wish I had the list in front of me. I'm going back and forth between my applications. Um, so, uh, it seems seems reasonable, not a large sum of money, uh, something that I think is fundable uh, out of our housing. So that one was appropriate. I am, uh, I've made my comment about Memorial Hall. I'm not inclined to fund it. I'm convincible differently but not really inclined on, on funding that. Um, uh, next up I had on my list was um, uh, the Main Street uh, park design. Uh, and um, um, I, I felt like that was possibly somewhat fundable. I'm not so sure. Uh, next I have Lathrop. Happy to see Lathrop back, happy to see them working on the invasives, really happy to see that area being taken care of. I share the concern that that group has about that particular area. Um, playground, am I missing something? Uh, I, I, I like this playground project for all kinds of reasons. I think it would really be a standout thing to have in the city. I just wish it was in a more accessible part of the city. That's the one part that I, have to admit, gives me a little struggle is that, you know, it's out in the far reaches of Florence, not on a bus line and um, gonna require people to do some transport to get there. Did I miss one? Uh, I think you missed three, uh, Historic Northampton. Did you? Oh, I thought that? I was, sorry. Yeah, I talked about that earlier. I support actually supporting Historic Northampton. And, um, you know, we are the people in round one who said, come back to us. So here they are back at us. Good for us for saying come back to us when we have, it's so funny to say that knowing that we'd have less funds, but I, I support that. So that's one. What else did I miss on uh, this bridge? The Agricultural Preservation Restriction Program. Mm, uh, yep. Yeah, and uh, so again, I I feel like that's supportive. And did I did I not do um, the Valley CDC? Valley on, CDC. That's what I thought. The Crafts, Crafts Avenue, Avenue uh, yeah. which also seems like a project worth supporting. Uh, you know, for what we have, it's nice to see uh, us uh, potentially supporting um, affordable housing and and uh, to a large degree, really happy to see that. And I'm always happy to see us supporting anything in line with accessibility. I just wish the accessibility was accessible. Thank you, Julia. Uh, Chris Selman. Um. Yeah, uh, I, I think I've said enough about Memorial Hall until we get right down to it. Um, I I hadn't really thought about the uh, playground accessibility issue because I am really enthusiastic about the project itself. Um, and nothing made me happier than hearing we could bond for it. And I think I'm willing to put aside my con my concerns about 
um, its location because I just think it's that good a project. And I, I'm, I'm going to support anybody who suggests bonding for it in its entirety. And if nobody else suggests it, I will make that motion. Um, Crafts have, you know, anytime I have the opportunity to support affordable housing, um, I'm, I'm all in. Um, C Valley CDC made it clear to us that the $200,000 figure is um, symbolic. Um, they were even willing to go with 100,000. Um, I would love to have some spare change um, left over so that we can go higher than 200,000 on that. I realize that none of it is gonna be the tipping point on it, um, but uh, I, 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 I like supporting their their work and they they do good work um after that you know i'm 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 i don't think we have any bad projects in front of us i think that um uh, what it'll come down to funding levels um will be based on what we have available to us um i'd like to see us do something for everybody but i don't know how realistic that is and part of that will come down to how much of it we decide to fund and how much of it we decide to fund through bonding. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Martha? Thank you. Okay, I went through these and I uh, listed, made a list of those that I thought um, were high priority for a number of reasons. And then there were a couple that I thought probably could wait but I'm also would like to hear a discussion about that. Maybe um, I might be misinterpreting. Maybe I'll start with those. Um, I didn't see an urgency with the Main Street Park design on um, the application, and you know, could that wait until the fall? Um, it's now April. Um, we have another round coming up in the fall. Um, design construction projects usually have these long <laughs> uh, timelines, I just, that was my thought about that. Um, and I felt the same way about the APR program that we could probably wait on that, maybe push it to the fall or encourage it be pushed to the fall. Um, so, so those two, I would say, if we can, um, be great to hold off on. I thought um, the others, so uh, Pioneer Valley Habitat, the housing monitoring, Lathrop, Historic Northampton, um, very much in support of, and Valley CDC. Um, I agree with Chris about that. It would be great to be able to give them the full 200 or more. Um, if, we, if we could do 100, that would give us a little mo more money to distribute elsewhere. And, um, the playground, I have to, I just want to say some few things about this. I also, um, I, I had a little bit of a mixed feeling about this somewhat along the lines of um, Memorial Hall in the sense that, you know, is it a city responsibility to provide these recreational facilities as part of the educational system because recreation is part of education. And again, you know, why are we, um, they're coming to us for that money. Shouldn't it be part of, um, you know, what the school is trying to finance? Although I know schools are in trouble right now. Um, but I will say that the outpouring of support for this project um, was really impressive. And it gave me a very good uh, sense of the need that I was not aware of. And so I really, um, I hand it to the organizers of Sarah's here tonight, I can see for pulling that all together. I think it was really well done. Um, and in terms of the bonding, I just wanted to bring this up. My understanding is that this is a two phase project and that we're being asked to phase one, to support phase one at this point for 500, whatever thousand um, dollars. If this were to be bonded, um, I, um, I would just suggest or put out there that we may, want to look at the whole amount because I think they will come back to us for the additional money for phase two. So just maybe to have some discussion about that. And then Memorial Hall, again, I would like to have a longer discussion, you know, after everyone's gone. Thanks, Martha. Uh, Kevin? 
Um, so I had uh, jotted down what I a few days ago what I thought we ought to do and revisited it and there's a, a, a few tweaks, but it seemed uh, like for, for me, uh, the uh, habitat inclined to fully fund, uh, invasive plant control, Lathrop inclined to fully fund, Parsons and Shepherd inclined to fully fund, uh, playground and in, inclined to bond uh, for uh, the, the full requested amount. Um, and and uh, Crafts Avenue also to fully fund. Um, and my my thinking about the the, the remaining ones, but well, about uh, and I, I I briefly read Sarah the the uh, explanation for the um, affordable housing monitoring position, um, and I didn't end up feeling a whole lot more clear than I was before I read it. Um, I, about uh, whether I thought we should fund it. It's not a big amount of money, but um, uh, it, so th th that wouldn't put a huge dent in things. Uh, the uh, Main Street Park design and the APR, um, I was inclined to fund them, but I had somewhat as the same concern as, as Martha or same question as Martha that uh, they aren't quite as time sensitive and they might actually be available in a, in a future round. Um, what I quickly jotted down was that if we did all the fully funded things and um, included the uh, Main Street Park de de design and the APR um, and then gave what and bonded the, the uh, playground, that we'd still have Three hundred and some odd thousand dollars left, um, that and I don't know whether this is permissible, but to say, okay, city of Northampton, spend it where you want um, within the frame of the things you've applied for, um, but that that's what I felt comfortable saying. Okay, we're not going to obligate ourselves for big amounts in future years for um, the city, other than um, as Martha points out the school system is also part of the city budget, um, but it does feel a little different to me. Um, I, I found myself wishing we knew if they just replaced at a minimum uh, the playground, what would that cost be as opposed to this really uh, well-designed uh, super playground that they have in mind? Because it seems like our, our, our uh, I'd, I'd feel a little more comfortable if we were funding that increment rather than the whole thing. But that's a relatively minor tweak. I'm enthusiastic enough about the uh, project itself that uh, fully funding through bonding uh, what they've requested feels okay to me. Um, but then, as I say, even if we fund all of those other things, we still have something like 300 plus thousand dollars left over, um, which could be uh, given to the city toward Memorial Hall, I assume is where they would want to uh, spend it. But that's as far as my thinking has gone right now. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Chris Tate? Yeah, uh, I was pretty much right where Kevin landed. Um, if we fully bonded the playground and funded all of the other, other worthy projects, we would have 300 something thousand left over. And um, I was inclined to uh, designate that for Memorial Hall. Um, 169,000 of that is in the historic reserve. And the only other historic project we have is historic Northampton for 47,000. So that's kind of hanging out there anyway, that 120 some odd thousand. Um, so that's kind of where my mind was. Um, I, I definitely have reservations about the Memorial Hall ask, especially the full 2.7 million. Um, but I'm sure a portion, a small portion of that 300,000, um, you know, would go towards the historic uh, portion of that project. And uh, the only other one I kind of had qualms about was, where was it, the um, the housing monitoring as well. But now I think I understand 
once they sell one unit, then a portion of those proceeds will go into continue funding the ongoing operation of it. So this is really like seed money to get that going. And then once they sell a unit, then they'll get a percentage of the sale to help fund monitoring further into the future. So this is just kind of getting it started. So I feel a little bit better about that. This won't be them coming back to us every year or something looking for more. So that's kind of where I'm landing on this stuff. But I'm, I'd also be fine with not uh, putting any money towards Memorial Hall. I don't know. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Lemmy. Yeah, I think my thinking is along what other people were thinking um, and looking at the APR program more in depth and, and doing some background research and talking to people I know and like farming, it was a little vague to me about like the impact of it. Like it was like to general farmers and with all the flooding, like I'm curious about, I don't know, I'm finding myself wishing I asked more specific questions around like which farm land would be targeted with this because um, that's just a lingering thing and it doesn't seem like terribly urgent. Um, I think like folks are saying there's like some extra money. Um, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't want to bond more than what the city has put committed in their own, like in the, this year, whether we consider the 426 or the, the 300 plus um, in the capital improvement program, I would want to take those into con those commitments into consideration. And I probably wouldn't want to exceed what they've themselves committed to this project. Um, and any extra money, I guess I was thinking like helping, uh, like increasing the principal on the the payment on the principal for the Ryan Road bonding so that we could like lessen the bond over the years because I imagine and I hope that like more recreation or you know type projects or accessibility projects come forward and the faster we can pay that off the better so if we do have extra money I think not bonding it as far out would be beneficial um yeah I think I mean and I, I just don't want to be repetitive, but basically what everyone else has kind of said. Um, Sarah, can you help us with the APR program for a moment? Are there, uh, so a number of people have expressed interest in, in, in perhaps putting that off, not funding that this cycle. Do you know of specific farms that are requesting APR and that this, this request is geared toward these smaller farms? Yeah, so it it wasn't speci specified in the application because it's it's not quite public yet, and there's still some details to be worked out. But there are some farmers in the meadows whose properties wouldn't really be a great fit for the federal APR program because they're not worth as much because they're in the floodplain. But they want to make sure that their um, their farms are used for active agriculture in the future. So they're interested in working with the city going forward. So there, it's not. It, it is a fund and there's no um, identified exact amount to be allocated to those farms yet. It, the discussions aren't that far along yet, uh, but there definitely are some some target parcels in mind. And, and how would delaying that affect those farms in consideration? Uh, so it would delay the ultimate placement of an APR. Okay. You know they they are in farming. They will they likely are uh, will be continue to be used for farming. But uh, there are a few farmers who have an interest in getting them protected as quickly as possible. Got it. Great. Um, and again, the the Main Street Park design. Uh, I asked you if it was putting the cart before the horse with all the Main Street redesign. Does this park? Uh, um, seem premature given the Main Street design work that's going on. Uh, so that one's intended to move forward in concert with the the Main Street redesign project. It, it's it, it's separate because it is a park parcel and it's not part of the roadway right of way. Uh, but having them um, move forward 
in, you know, in conjunction with each other and concurrently would be useful. So if that gets delayed, I would suspect that Carolyn may come back with an expedited request um, late in the summer once funds are available. So I don't know for sure. Okay. Um, so just to finish on, uh, finish up, and I'll I'll give my comments. I'm in agreement with what 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 folks said. Um, I have some questions about the Ryan Road uh, playground. And one is, as Julia brought up, it's it's in a in a place that that you have to drive to, um, which means accessibility is is problematic. The other question I have is who is how the proposal uh, sort of um, generated itself from from the grassroots from the school, which is which is on one level great, but on the other level it raised some concerns to me about who's going to manage this project. It didn't come before the city. It is not from the rec department. Who is who would who would be the um, the folks in charge of overseeing this? I don't think it's going to be the 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 physical therapist at the at the school, given the nature of the of 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 the ass. So that that concerned me a little bit in terms of um, wh who generated it. Uh, it didn't come before the rec department, Julia. I don't think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It, it uh, didn't, but that's because playgrounds that are on school grounds are part of uh, are, resp are the responsibility of the school system. So it would come through Northampton schools. But this this one did not, right? Right, but once built, once built, it, it it's it's right. under the school, right? We we have to. So as Parks and Rec, when we want to use school facilities, we have to get school sometimes school committee permission to use school facilities mm -hmm. but when when we fund, funded the um the bridge street playground and the yeah. jack street playground those were both came through the the city correct uh, sarah and this one has not so i guess i'm i uh, i mean who does the money go to in this in this case and i guess i was just looking for some clarification i mean i as a disabled man, I love the idea of an accessible playground. I was so moved uh, and so touched by the amount of support that came out in the general public meeting. I mean, it brought tears to my eyes to hear stories that 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 folks were telling. It's clearly we're in need of this. I just want to make sure that one to address Julia's concern. It's in it's in the right place. Uh, number two, that there is that framework in place to assure that. That there is some entity that is that is in control of this, and I and I was confused as to who that who that entity was, and I guess I'm just wondering if uh, and I hate to hate to put things off, uh, particularly with the state of the existing uh, Ryan Road playground, which seems pretty dismal and in need of in need of repair. But uh, those those are my concerns, not. Anything to do with the with the necessity of the project, with the value of the project, with the support that the project has with with folks. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think I've I've I've, I've said enough. Um, so what? So to recapsulate, recapsulate is that a word? Recapitulate? No. Um, uh, to review what it is that I that I think we said. I might have heard that. That that all of us and, and someone stop me if I'm if I'm wrong are in favor of the Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity project. That we've had really good experience with them in the past. The work that they do is wonderful and and continues to be. Um, that the Lathrop Invasives project. There's so much volunteer support out there. They they have another three year uh, component going. They are good to go. Uh, Historic Northampton. We asked them back. They came back. Uh, what wonderful work they continue to do. Um, Valley CDC, we can't get enough of affordable housing. Um, so it seems like those projects at Valley CDC, the Historic North Hampton, Lathrop, and Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity are ones that we all had agreement on. Is that is that correct? And someone stop me if I'm wrong. Um, the APR program, some of us were like, well, if if something had to wait, that could wait. Uh, while we're in favor of 
agricultural preservation restrictions. I think as a committee, it's is if if we were looking at um, shaving some monies off, that perhaps would be one. Uh, same with the uh, Main Street Park design. Would that have to go through? But then Sarah's coming back and saying, well, it would be an expedited one that would come come to us again in the summer. So so maybe not on that. Um, the monitor the housing monitoring observation while not all of us quite got what it is that exactly is it just seems like it's necessary and that that is something that we've that the city has sort of agreed to and 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 here's a here's a way to to, to fund it um so so is that am i capturing the sense of the group here on this somewhat um so i think it may may make sense now to have the discussion on the two big ones and then we can go back and visit the APR and the Main Street Park design um, uh, uh, after perhaps so let's I so maybe let's just go back and and deal with the elephant the big elephant the gigantic six ton how, how big are elephants one ton two tons whatever they are elephant which is um obviously which is Memorial Hall uh, and so we have we have a number of options. One is uh, to not fund it at all. Number two is to uh, um, uh, bond it at what it's fully requested at two point seven million, uh, and then we would decide on what what length of time to recommend on that bonding. Another option is to look at what it is that we have left after we spend on all the other projects that we want to, uh, and if in fact we're we're taking Ryan Road out of the playground to to put that for what is left of that money directly into Memorial Hall as a as a as a lump sum with without without bonding. Um, so don't fund it, bond it, uh, fund part of it with what is what is left. Uh, put it off for a cycle and have them come back if we have a little more money and the project becomes clearer to us. Um, so My apologies. Have, I need a quick timeout. So I'll be right back. Okay. Do we all do we all need a quick timeout? Should we take a little break? Bathroom break? Yes. Was that a yes? Okay. Bathroom break. Uh, we'll be back in five minutes. How about that? Five minutes. We'll wait just a moment for Chris Tate to return. All right, we're back. Um, so here we go on the elephant in the room, Memorial Hall. Um, did folks have any clarity, haven't spoken perhaps first? Um, I'm thinking of Julia or, or Chris, uh, 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 different thoughts on Memorial Hall. Uh, where where are, are we at? Should I do a go round again? I'm going to take that as a yes. So let's 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 just start again. Uh, Julia, Memorial Hall. I appreciated hearing the scenario of we'll give it whatever we have left over. That 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 seems that seems like a a, a reasonable approach. Um, still still not sure we want to give it everything we have left over, and also not sure that we're going to have as much left over as we. As, as you know, I went back into the spreadsheet and I was like, I could figure out a way where we would have less left over. Uh, but it does does give something toward toward that historic rehabilitation. So um, 
I'm feeling more strong, more, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I've moved away from any inclination to looking at bonding. That is one thing I feel like I'm moving away from. So. Uh, Chris Helen. Okay. Um, yeah. It was good to hear other people's thoughts on this because I wasn't approaching it from that direction. And as I said on a couple of occasions, it's hard for me to look at this as an individual project, given my sort of holistic concerns about the way the city's uh, manipulating CPA funds. Um, having said that, uh, the on-site visit was pretty telling. Uh, there is there is a need for for work to be done there. Um, there's literally pieces of the ceiling falling into office space and, um, a couple of other issues, um, that, you know, even, even to my untrained eye with the, with the, uh, the foundation in the basement, um, that need to be addressed. And <clears throat> the problem becomes, and there are also some really good photos in the pro in the, uh, proposal of, um, facade work that has worked its way loose and is and is is currently a safety his, issue uh for for passers by so work needs to get done um doesn't convince me that we're the people who ought to do it but it does need to get done um but i will say that i think the idea of not doing the bonding and providing them what resources we may have available sends a very clear signal to the city that that the CPA is not happy about the thought that, that, that and I don't want to put words in other people's mouths but that that we're going to be used as a slush fund for the city um when you know that the other resources they have available to them um don't don't take them as far as they need to go. Um, but I want to hear what other people have to say. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Martha. Yeah, I, it's a great discussion. I So first of all, I should just say, um, you know, representing the Historical Commission, um, you know, obviously the commission supports anything that can be done for this resource because it's such an important part of downtown. It's historic. Um, it's also a building that is commemorating the veterans of the city, which makes it kind of doubly important. Um, so in that regard, you know, support is um, important. But I, I really share with Chris and Julia, Kevin, um, you know, just this concern that was brought up in the last round, we talked about, um, uh, you know, the, the City Hall and the Academy of Music. Um, I, I just, I don't know that the CPA is the appropriate place to be dealing with these problems. And I, it feels to me like um, it can consume all of our budget for the next extended number of years, especially if you, we get into bonding over 10 years. I mean, it's a lot of money. Um, that could be taken away from some really valuable things. And, um, you know, it's just one resource. And that said, I think that um, somehow this message needs to be, be get conveyed to the mayor, to the city council, to the finance director, um, that this has got to be addressed uh, over the long term. And, um, you know, I think we could have a conversation with them or Brian or a couple of us could have a conversation with if that's what's necessary. But I just think that we can't continue to entertain these huge proposals for these um, buildings that are really not our responsibility. Um, and then just to respond to what Chris said about the site visit, yes, there is a lot of work that needs to be done. Some of it is urgent. I, that was my understanding of the stabilization funds that came from the city, the emergency funds, though. Am I, am I wrong about that? It was $400,000, $450,000. So that was too that was to address the plaster that was falling down on the worker's head and some of the other um, really threatening uh, things that are threatening public safety. So that was my understanding of that money um, and that that would be enough to kind of stabilize things. Uh, Sarah, can you, 
Can you answer that question? Uh, I can't. I'm just trying to follow the exact financial order for the work to see what was allowed. Um, See, Martha, I was under the impression that the, that the stabilization money had already been spent and it was uh, around the work that had been done on a couple of arches in the basement and a couple of other things. I did not I didn't get the sense that this was being set aside for that that that, that other work. Uh, and I'm not saying I'm I'm right, but that was that was the impression I walked away from so, that that uh, money that that money had already been spent. No, so that was that was separate funding. So the stabilization funds hadn't been awarded by city council at the time of the, the CPC's visit. Great, um, thanks for the state. I can't yeah. easily pull up a detailed listing of, of what the stabilization funds were intended to be used for, but it, it was for that priority emergency work. Yeah, and then we saw those. Great, thank you. Um, you know, the other thing is, I think Chris, you had brought this up about the drainage. Um, there is a big drainage problem on the east side of the building and it didn't sound from what the architect said or engineer like they were going to really be able to solve it with this work that they do because their envelope isn't big enough in order to do that so that's a um, small concern but it's also contributing to a lot of problems in the building so um well, i'm really on the, go ahead is, which is the east side is that toward the Unitarian church uh yeah yes yeah, it's all pay. It's completely covered with pavement, which is part of the problem. And most of the pavement is draining right into the building. So, so that um, that is where I stand on things. Um, I, you know, I'm concerned about uh, committing to bonding a project of this size for a project like this that we're going to get ourselves involved in having to do a lot more of these. And it, again, where it's going to consume the budget. That's all I have right now. Thanks, Martha. Uh, Kevin? Yeah, from what I understand, and I was out of state at the tour, so I have only the uh, reports and, and the uh, description in the application to go by, that uh, it probably does need to be bonded. It just shouldn't come out of CPC money, uh, the repayment of the bond is my sense. That uh, So I'm, I'm unwilling to... Uh, advocate for CPC bonding for Memorial Hall. I do feel comfortable with uh, giving the city the remainder. It's an, an important building. I want to see it fixed. And if we have a few hundred thousand dollars left over and that can reduce the amount of bonding that the city has to do, then that's a fine thing. But I don't think that should all be, for the reasons Martha was just saying, if we take that on, uh, A, it sets a precedent that the city will come back and use um, again in the future. And it also reduces our ability to fund a lot of other valuable things. Let me. Yeah, I, I think I'm in agreement. Um, definitely not bonding off, you know, willing to give some amount of money. In terms of precedent, I don't know that like, if for, for folks worried about precedent, I, you know, is giving one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a precedent, it won't, you know, nonetheless, even if it's not the two point seven million. No, just curious if people are. I'm a little confused when people are talking about the precedent. If giving any amount would still be concerning, or if just yeah, but I feel open. I feel a little less concerned about the precedent, hoping that the priorities the good projects will roll in and trump these kinds of projects every time um i hope so yeah but definitely don't want to become like a sort of easy place for the city to kind of do overflow work and not focus on the community grassroots projects could be funded uh chris Tate. there we go um, yeah, I'm still kind of in the same place as before, which is I have no interest in bonding this project. I'm fine if they eat last, as it as it were. If we have money left over, I'm okay to um, kick some money 
you know, over, but not at the expense of any of these other fine projects. Um, and again, yeah, that's it. So it seems like we're coming to an agreement that bonding is not something we are in favor of, that um, once we get through other projects, we would consider uh, whatever money is that, that we would consider an outright um, uh, recommendation that money be given to Memorial Hall, depending on what we what we had left and how much we would determine later. But that bonding at this point for us is not something that we want to consider. Is that is that the sense of the group? Yes. Okay. So I think that's that takes bonding off the table. It doesn't take an award or a recommendation for Memorial Hall off, but we can perhaps um, wait on that and come back come back to that. How about that? So let's go to um, the playground, the Ryan Road playground. Uh, and um, um, so the so the options there would be to bond, to bond or not to bond, uh, but also to look at what we're spending on other projects and give an outright amount to them as well from what from what our reserves are, um, not reserves. If if we took Memorial Hall and the playground out of the picture. My calculations are that, and, and we fully funded everything else, all of the seven projects. My calculations are that we'd afford, we'd spend four hundred fifty nine thousand out of our seven hundred seventy four thousand. So that would leave us with five, six, seven, three hundred and ten thousand or something dollars, a little over three hundred thousand dollars. So that would be an option. Is if we were to fund fund everybody, we'd say, well, here's three hundred thousand for the for the playground. Um, so that so that is an option as well. So and we have to the bond. Only, the only snag is um, some of that is in the historic reserve. Oh, good point. Very good point. So well, let's see. Uh, historic Northampton. If we are spending forty-seven thousand, you're right. Thank you, thank you, Chris. We would have to take so hundred twenty. We we could give the balance of the historic reserve to Memorial Hall, and then give the rest to the playground, and then bond the remainder. For the playground that we don't give outright. Correct, Sarah. What is the lowest that 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 we bond or we could bond? Is there is there a minimum amount? Uh, there is. I don't know what the minimum really would be, I and mean, there's an amount where it gets to be so small that it, it's tough to get a buyer for it. But I don't know what it is. Um, but just for discussion purposes, if the committee were to recommend bonding of the full 500,000 and change, um, then that would, um, you know, with a, this is probably a little bit high if anything. So this is with an estimated 3% interest rate. Um, so this is what the payment schedule would be in FY 26 through 30. Great. You know, questions for Sarah about that? Thank you for pulling that up so quickly for us. Uh, Not a okay. question about the bonding, but um, Martha raised a point, I think it was Martha raised a point, that, that this is a multi-phase program and that we were only being asked to um, fund phase one. I, I actually, I went back and, because and, I raised the same, I had the same question myself. And my reading of it was that actually the 500,000 is 60, the 500 and change is 65% or whatever of the total spent over the two cycles that the front, the first cycle is about 500,000 and the second cycle is about 250. Um, Sarah, do you, can you clarify that? Right. And that's, that was my reading of it as well. So. Okay. Yeah. So we're talking about the 750 is, is for both cycles. Okay. Yeah, and they also stated that there really aren't other sources of funding for this. Yeah. So I think they will come back for the additional amount. And so if we were to bond, you know, half a million dollars now, um, then what happens when they come back in the fall and want another two, two something? 
Uh, let me. Uh, yeah, I just wanted a quick overview of what bonds we already have out. Like, what are we already paying on? Is that in that? I think you pulled that up. There was something in that. So that's column uh, G. Yeah, so the so the bonding obligations remaining. So FY24, just about done. So there, there are three years of remaining payments on prior borrowing. So that, that's these here. Do you have further questions on that, Lenny? No, I just wanted to remind, yeah, I thought we talked about it. But that makes sense. So we don't have any bonds past fiscal year 28. No, nope. uh, so it's getting to the end of, of the bonding cycles for all of the uh, projects for which borrowing was previously approved. Great. All right, thanks for pulling that up again, Sarah. Okay, so let's do a, another go round. I mean, about the Brian Road Playground ask. Uh, we'll just stay in the order that we were doing, Julia. I hear what you're saying about them coming back for a second ask. And I, you know, I think we would, we're always open to a second ask from projects that do well with their first go round on the funding. The second ask wouldn't be as large. It would sit within our regular cycle. Um, so for me, that's just not part of the consideration here. And I think I would, I would really like for us to be able to <laughs> what I'd really like for us to be able to do is fully fund this and the same playground at every school in Northampton. Now I feel good. Just, just saying that. And, and that's, and, and an accessible playground at, at all of our community housing projects as well. Then I think we've done uh, our due diligence, uh, uh, you know, for, from the standpoint of recreation and the standpoint of, of, of accessibility. Um, either way, I'm inclined to, to bond this project, fully bond or recommend that we fully bond this project. Yes, that's gonna leave us some money. Maybe that money goes to, uh, to, the, to the yeah, Memorial Hall, maybe not. Oh, I think that's still up for a conversation. Uh, maybe that money's actually sitting there when they do come around for the fall round. And, and I think that, you know, that it, that 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 gives us a little buffer moving into the fall. Um, but in any event, my inclination is bond it in full, uh, make this project happen, and then let's go down through our other list. Thanks, Julian. Thanks for going first. Uh, Chris Howell? Um, before she even said it, I was I was thinking along the same lines, which is um, Maybe we should approach this differently and not think about this as the only playground, but as the first playground and and go at it that way uh, and not and not be overly concerned that it's not in the perfect spot. Um, instead, seize the opportunity to do something for um, populations that we don't often get to serve directly. Um, we do a lot of things for the community at large, but oftentimes they're only tangentially um, related to people who are dealing with issues of accessibility and even for that matter for kids. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, as I was before, I'm in favor of bonding the whole thing and we'll go from there. Uh, thanks, Chris. Martha? Um, I, I tend to agree, uh, Sarah, I just have um, two questions. Um, one is, um, you know, I wish that we could bond for the whole thing. <laughs> I know they only applied for part of it, but I wish we could just do it. If we're going to bond, like bond the whole thing, you know, just get it done. But it's probably not possible to do that. So that's okay. Um, when will the funds become available to them? If they were, if we were to get, you know, recommend bonding, when would the funds actually become available for yeah, the project? So, uh, so uh, first point, there, there's nothing to stop the committee from recommending more funding than an applicant has requested. City Council cannot do that. 
um, they can't change your recommendation once it goes to them, but but you could okay. recommend more if you wanted to. Uh, I will have to check with uh, the finance director about the details of the bond. Um, sometimes the committee will end up doing a, a bond anticipatory note, which is like a pre-bond, which allows the funds to be available um, as soon as city council approves it, essentially, oh. for the project. But I... I would have details on that for the next meeting. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, I would agree about, I think this is a great model for the city. And like what Julia said, it'd be great to have these everywhere. And this should just be the beginning. And um, I would be in favor of recommending the full project. One of the other things too, is that, you know, that if they wait on phase two, it will be more expensive the next time around because everything will go up in price. So, if that's an option and people were um, in agreement, I would recommend that. So the more than the, whatever the full project is, but this is one and two. What, what is the cost of the full project, Sarah? 750 something, is that? So it's- I think it's 764, 999, 765. Yeah. I'm sorry, 764? 65, essentially. Yeah, so a dollar short, yeah, so 765. <laughs> Great, thank you, Martha. Uh, Kevin? I agree with uh, Martha's suggestion. Lemmy? Yeah, I like the idea of bonding the whole thing, Um, but what you brought up, Brian, is a question. Like, there was a lot of community support, but I didn't see a lot of, like, administrative support. <laughs> um, And so just, I guess, Sarah, I do have a question for you. Like, is there a sense that, like, I don't know, for, for some reason, I mean, it would be kind of above our pay grade or something to worry about that necessarily, but like, would it, yeah, is there any reason where, because we didn't hear from like the principal or the school committee or anything that this would have a hiccup? Yeah, I mean, there was a support letter from uh, Tony who, carries out a lot of these projects for the school department in the application. Uh, it didn't specify that he would be the one to oversee the project, do the like construction one had and, had one too. And, and that like, type of thing. But I, so I, I don't know those details. Those weren't included in the application. You're reminding me that there was a school committee member in the application as well. So that was, that's good. So I fully support that then. Uh, Chris Tate? Um, I support bonding for the full amount that they requested, and I, um, you know, part of what I like about CPA funds is they're kind of a, a partial amount, but they're not, you know, usually the full amount of the project. I'll certainly go along if the rest of the committee wants to fund, you know, more than they asked for, that, that's fine. I would support that, but I don't. That wouldn't be my first inclination. So uh, I would uh, support the 500,000 number or, or more. Give them a million. Julia. So I thought I remembered something and I was just going back through the application. At the bottom of the budget, it says that if both phases are done together, they actually get a deduction of $45,000 and, and, and we would be asking for about $720,000 in bonding. Not a huge savings, but you know, right now we are nickel and diming the, the, the CPC budget. And so if, if we're gonna nickel and dime CPC uh, and, we've, and we fund and, they, and, and, we, and, and we say to them, we're funding it larger, we'd like to fund it larger, uh, do both phases together what this uh, what this contract proposes so so there's that and then i guess the thing i kept looking at in the contract is like where's the money for contingency what if what if uh and and that but that's not in the proposal so can't fund what's not in there so to recap it seems like all of us like the idea of the ryan Roof playground um uh, we like the idea of bonding it and recommending bonding it um for the full five years, is that what we'd like, or would we like to to get it over quicker? 
have the pain up the more the pain up front. Um, thoughts? Uh, maybe people up. Oh, yeah, Sarah, what what uh, what are you doing showing this here? Well, uh, but but I what I'm wondering is if if we could you know I, I get that they've divided it into two phases, but could we fund it in full and say don't divide it in two phases? Here's seven hundred twenty thousand dollars. Don't divide it. Make this happen. Yeah. So uh, th so this assumes seven hundred twenty thousand dollars borrowed over a period of five years. So that that's showing what the debt service would be um, mm. for those five years. Okay. And I guess my for so, discussion purposes. Thank you, Sarah. So the so I, it, it seems like all like we have consensus on wanting to bond Ryan Road. The question is, do we bond at five hundred seven thousand, which essentially was the ask, or do we bond at what Julia is suggesting, which is seven hundred twenty thousand, um, which is a seven sixty five minus this forty five in savings if we if both projects are are put together. And do we bond, want to want to recommend bonding for uh, all five years, which is the upper limit of what we can do, or would we want to reduce that to say three years or four years, um, reduce the reduce the amount of interest that we pay? Uh, so there's four years that Sarah's showing us. So we save a little bit of money there. We just it's a little. Steeper up front, two hundred one thousand. The first year, one ninety six, down to one eighty five. Can you show us three years, Sarah? So even steeper, but again, less interest, uh, less interest paid out. So I think probably three years would be the minimum amount that we'd want to bond. But three, four, or five years, and then either five oh seven or seven hundred and twenty thousand. Um, there's the 507, even, even less. Uh, questions to Sarah about her playing with this? The wonder of Excel, right? It would have put in figures and hope it, hope it gets, gets out the, the, the correct information. Um, so I guess my suggestion is we stay on this Ryan Road thing and we do another quick go round, and the question is not to bond or not to bond, because we are bonding, or we're recommending bonding, but to bond at the five hundred seven or the seven twenty, um, and uh, how many years? How many years to bond them? Does that is that does that make sense for a go round? I'm seeing nodding heads, and we'll just I think and Julia may be annoyed, but let's just continue in the order that we're. That we're going if that's all right. Um, yeah, you so know, Julie, I was about I was about to say I'm last this time, right? Uh, well, we could do that. I suppose that's uh, yes. Do that. Okay, let's 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 do reverse order. Uh, Chris Tate. All right, I like Julia's idea of yeah. If we can phase, if we don't phase these projects at all, there's there's a bonus there. Um, so I would support the seven hundred twenty thousand figure, no phasing. Do it all at once, five years. Uh, let me. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. And I'm remembering a note from, I think it was Martha, about more shade trees, just looking back on the pictures. I don't know if there's like a way to remind them of that. But I would support, I think three years if we can. And then um, if we give like Valley CD, if, if we end up having to adjust things to make a three-year bond, you know, shaving like 50,000 off the value CDC because they said it could be between 100 and two, like play with those numbers basically um, to allow for a three-year bond versus a five-year. I, I think, Lemmy, we can bond for three or five and not have to play with value CDC because this is something that we're, that we're, that we're borrowing in the future for. So but if it was 240,000 for principal for the three-year bond, then in, is that true? Okay, if that's true, because I thought the hundred twenty thousand we had left was the historic preserve or something. So then that would max. We out. won't be so, making bonding payments though till FY twenty five. That's why. Oh, okay, thank you. 
Uh, so I'm hearing, let me say three, th rather th three years rather than five years. Is that correct? But bonding for the full 720 is what we're looking at. Yes, uh, Kevin. Uh, 3% is almost free money. Um, I'd rather go five years, but I, I support going for the uh, full uh, 720. Uh, Martha. Yes, I say do it all at once. And it's great that we can give them more than they asked for. Um, the only reason I would do the shorter is just this, I know that these, uh, you know, the playground equipment has a varying shelf life. Um, and it's kind of like, you don't want to be paying for a car after it doesn't work anymore. So I just would get it over with more quickly during three years. Uh, Chris. I'm comfortable bonding the whole thing. Um, I, I'm, I understand Martha's argument, so I'm comfortable with that, but I'm not, I'm not locked into a year period. So if you need me to decide, I'll say three, but I, I can go either way. Uh, Julia. Yeah, I bond the 720 and, um, I'm with Chris on years. I'm, 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 I, I, you know, I'm having a hard time moving into one direction or another because really playground equipment, it can, it can die so quickly, but you know, what are we going to do? It's what we're buying. We need it. So hearing, I'm hearing three years, Julia. Yeah, I'm fine with three. Okay. Um, did everyone go around? Uh, I, I so oh I I haven't yes I I'm good with seven twenty and I'm good with three as well. We have a couple folks who are holding off for five. I think Chris Tate and Lemmy maybe. Are you are you okay with going with three? Uh, yes. Okay. I'm okay so with three. here we are. so we are coming to some agreement about bonding for seven hundred twenty thousand over a three year period. Is that Correct for this. Okay, great. Well, we are we are moving forward here. Um, Can I make a motion that we do just that? So I think this is the first one that we we could make a motion for because we're in agreement. Yes, uh, Chris. Can you put forward a motion, please? But, uh, Brian, just for clarity, is this the the shopping cart motion, or, or are we solidifying this one? Oh, right. Yes. Um, so in the past, we've done shopping carts where we're making motions to put them in the shopping cart and we're not voting. And then we're putting the shopping cart as a whole at the very end. So people comfortable with that? Um, still subject to change. But Chris is suggesting that out of the shelf and into the cart, out of the shelf and into the cart. Um, yes. So, Chris, continue. So this is the playground at Ryan Road. $720,000 bonded over three years. And is there a second on that? Chris, a bunch of seconds. And I think if we go in the shopping cart, we don't have to vote yet. Is that right, Sarah? So we're gonna uh, vote if you're making motions, you, you should, because it's not a it's not an action otherwise. Or other or if you just want to have agreement instead of a formal motion and have a formal motion later for everything, that's fine too. Uh, okay, so Chris, are you, Tate, are you okay with a with a with an agreement rather than a formal motion? And then we will revisit okay it with when... anything, just codifying <laughs> a decision. Okay, and so I think we've done that without having to do a roll call on, on so, each of these. Okay. So straw, straw poll on that one. Okay, straw poll on that, and it's into the into the shopping cart. Um, so let's just move down the list with the straw polling. Uh, the Valley CDC crafts out. Someone want to make a motion or a, a suggestion? Suggestion is that what we're calling about? I suggest yeah. we put it in the cart. Okay, at a full amount requested. Hold at on, full on. amount two hundred thousand. Is there a second on that? Okay, everybody's hands are going up. So into the cart it goes. Um, the let's look at the ones that we have agreement or we seem to have agreement with historic Northampton for Parsons House and Shepherd House. Put it in the card at 47104. Is there a second? A second. A second. Everybody's hands are up into the shopping cart at 47104. 
Lathrop Invasives. Put it in the card at 19131. Is there a second? Everybody's hands are up into the cart. Uh, let's see, the Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity, Woodland Drive. Put it in the cart for 50. Uh, is there a second? Can we get an A with that too? Everybody's, a buy and vowel. Everybody's hands go up. Uh, so then the two that are left before we, before we revisit one more time Memorial Hall is the housing observation. Mm -hmm and the APR program. Um, so let's do with housing, the housing monitoring observation for 6,000. Does someone want to make a motion about that? I'm hoping that's going to be kind of a, a seed money and then it'll kind of be able to pay for itself once they sell the first unit. So I, I would move that we put it in the cart for 6,000. Is there a second? second? Hands go up. All right, so in it goes. Uh, last, before we deal with um, Memorial Hall, is the APR program. I would say put it in the cart for 60,000. Is there a second on that? Okay, looks like hands are all going up on that into the cart. And um, Brian, don't forget the Main Street Park. Oh, thank you, Martha. Yes, I did forget the Main Street Park. Um, so the main street park design coming from um, OPS. So I would recommend putting that into the cart so we don't have to see it as an emergency application in the summer. <laughs> Is there a second on that? It's like everybody's hands went up on that. So it looks like that's into the cart. So we have full funding, at least in the cart for, for Valley CDC, APR, Ryan, I'm uh, sorry, um, historic Northampton, Lathrop Invasives, the park design. Did we do monitoring? Did we do the monitoring thing? Yes, we did. Uh, as well as Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity. We also have in the cart um, the Ryan Road Playground being bonded for three years at 720000 And that is in the cart as well. The only thing that, that is not in the cart is Memorial Hall. So where so does someone want to make a motion to place that in the cart at at all? Well, can we kind of see where we, can we do a subtotal of where we stand right now? Yeah, so that totals 459,235 uh some of that does remain in the historic reserve. Let me do the math. Hold on. Uh, so that's 169. That's, is that 169,912 minus the 47,104? It, it is, yeah. Sarah, what, uh, can you go back on that total? I have a different total on my sheet. Uh-oh. I screw up. 160. I, I have, along with Sarah, Julia, for that um, the total projects oh. without the playground memorial hall are Four hundred fifty nine thousand two hundred thirty five. Yeah, and that's hmm. not that's not including the bonding, Julia. If that's why, if you had a much. Higher oh yeah. Okay. No, I see where the mistake is. Forget it. Yeah, I see. I see it. Okay. Yep. Um, which leaves us with. Um, well, uh, Sarah, you're taking the the uh, historic North Campton out of that historic reserve, and that's. Yeah. So there will be uh, so. Uh, 122,808 remaining in the historic reserve after the uh, historic Northampton cart item. One, 122,808. And we have, so the, if in fact we were to spend the, spend ourselves out, um, we would be taking the 774, 774, 589, Subtracting out 459 through 35. And I get uh, 315,354. Is that what other people are getting? Yeah, I got the same. 315, 354. Um, Chris Tate. 
Yeah, I was going to suggest, you know, I see, I mean, there's an infinite number of options, but three that I see would be, as you say, Brian, we spend ourselves out with that 315 figure. Um, another one would be we spend out the historic reserve portion. Um, I haven't done the math, but whatever that difference is, just to balance out the historic reserve for this round. So that, that would be the 122 808. Yep, and another option could be zero dollars. So those are those are three options that I see. Um, I don't feel strongly for any of those three personally, but those are three that I think might make sense to. Yeah, thank you for think about. Yeah, thanks, Chris. That's helpful. Uh, Lemon, I just had a question about like the reserves and how that works. Sorry, I know I'm a newer member, but just what does it mean to spend down a reserve, the historic reserve? Sarah? Uh, so when we set aside the, the funds that we're anticipating at the beginning of each fiscal year, we put 10% to meet the statutory requirements into the historic account, affordable housing account, and open space and recreation. That one's combined account. So, there, so even if the committee doesn't recommend or evaluate any say historic uh, proposals during an entire entire fiscal year um, the committee's and city's responsibility to spend or set aside at least 10 percent of annual revenues on on each of those will will be um, will be met by carrying that over into the next fiscal year so if we don't spend the historic reserve at this point it will just bounce into fiscal year 25. Does that help, Lemmy? Does that answer that question? Okay. Um, all right. So as um, Chris Tate presented, we have sort of what what seems like three choices. One is zero funding for Memorial Hall. The second is to spend out the rest of the historic reserve, which would be one hundred twenty two thousand eight hundred and eight. The third would be to spend everything that is left to us, which is three hundred fifteen thousand three hundred fifty four. Um, and those seem like the three choices, correct? Okay. Um, does someone want to make a motion? Or do we need to do another go round about these three choices? Um, I move we fund at uh, 300,000. Just hang on to a couple bucks just because. A second coming from Julia. Um, discussion on this. Sort of interesting. I just did some quick math because I got curious. And if we were to put in that three hundred thousand, then we will <laughs> we will be spending the exact same amount in our first uh, round and our second round, uh, including the bonding. So. It kind of tells you how much we really want in our CP uh, CPA budget each each year, which is about two point eight as opposed to what we got. Mm. That's but but it does say we're we're doing equal things in both rounds now. Okay, so uh, Martha, I just um I'm not um opposing the three hundred thousand for. Memorial Hall, but I think we need to be clear about the message we're sending. And is it a message saying we support what you're trying to do here? And obviously the building is very valuable to the city for many reasons. Um, so we want to make a contribution, but there needs to be a greater strategy developed to deal with this and other historic buildings in the city that they own. Can I speak to that a little bit? Please. Um, I agree, Martha. And and one of the things that I've been thinking about over the last couple of weeks is how do we, how do we send that message? Um, in the past, what we've done as a committee is uh, we, we put conditions on money and that kind of thing. I don't think conditions really fit the bill here because the condition is on a particular program and how we want to see the money that we're allocating spent. And what you're talking about and what I, I think and what I envision for myself is a broader statement from the committee 
as to how we want to begin to address these issues when they come up from the city. Um, and what I've been thinking about, and um, this hasn't been done in the time that I've been here, but what I've been thinking about, you you talked about a meeting, a sit down with members of the committee and 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 and, and city officials. I've been thinking about sending a letter. Um, and it wouldn't be something that necessarily has to happen in conjunction with this, but an explanation of what my feelings are on this and how I think I will be approaching similar requests as they come before us in the future. So that's just something I've been thinking about. Um, Sarah, I know you're you're taking notes for this meeting. Did you get Martha's what Martha said sort of down? Because I, I thought that was very well well articulated, Martha, and I appreciate your um, verbalizing that in a way that made a lot of sense to me, because I think it speaks, it speaks to me. Um, so we still have a sort of motion on the floor that we're discussing about 300,000 uh, for Memorial Hall, and we're still discussing that. Um, and I think recognizing that 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 would be accompanied by some sort of message and we can work on the format of that whether it's a written whether we meet invite um city folks to one of our first meetings next fall so that we can uh reiterate what that message is we can do both but anyway let's continue with this three hundred thousand uh discussion with three hundred thousand for uh, memorial hall which would leave us with fifteen thousand to be carried over to next year. And it would also exhaust our historic reserve. So no historic reserve would be carried over to next year. We'd spend out all of the historic reserve, 122,000 of that, and another 200, a little less than 200,000 in general, general stuff. Um, so that's the motion from Chris. There was a second from somebody, Julia, was it? Any further discussion on this? I, again, I don't know that we have to be worried about precedent. Um, I, I guess now that I'm thinking about it, I do feel a little bit more strongly that I'd rather just send them the 122,000 um, uh, just because that 10%, that's kind of what we, you know, what we aim to spend yearly on historic projects. So we're kind of showing them that, you know, yes, city, some, I'm sure many city buildings are historic buildings as well, but you can't structure your whole maintenance budget around asking CPC for, to bond your projects for you. And, you know, so if we have any historic monies left over, maybe we could give you some, but, you know, I think it's a pretty clear message that this isn't, the way to structure their maintenance budgets. Um, Chris, one, we had a lot of this discussion when we were funding the, um, to fund or not to fund um, the, 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 the church there that was going into private developers. And, and the question was, oh my goodness, if we do this, uh, that's setting precedent. And from now on, any private developer is gonna come into us for any historic preservation. We are locked into that because we have done it before. And I do think we're pretty clear as a, as a committee that um, we act independently every, uh, every, every session. And because we've done something one way in the past does not mean that we will necessarily do it, do it again. So I hope that the city is, understands that, that if in fact we, we commit a certain amount to Memorial Hall, it doesn't mean that we will do the same for other city buildings or even again for Memorial Hall. But thank you for that. For that. So, but what I hear you saying, Chris Pate, is that um, you're more comfortable with spending out historic reserve, which is 122 thousand, and leaving it at at that. Is that correct? Yeah, I just feel there's a logic to it instead of just picking a number out of the air. Mm -hmm. uh, so Chris has made a motion. Julia has seconded. It. Let's just do a sense of the group. Kevin, thoughts. Um, I, I appreciate what uh, Chris Tate has, has said that uh, if we uh, 
earmark uh, sent e send earmarked dollars as uh, so this is historic preservation that does underscore the message that that's what we're um, intending to support not for the overall responsibility for city taking care of its own buildings uh, I think we can do the same thing with the communication um, so I'm, I'm comfortable voting uh, in favor of uh, uh, Chris Hellman's motion uh, for 300,000, but would advocate that we send a communication at the same time, not wait till the fall. I think Martha's description of making a contribution um, is a, 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 a nice way. We, hey, we can make a contribution within the purview of uh, historic preservation. That's not the same thing as uh, taking the load off the city for their responsibility. Uh, Julia? I hear your logic, Chris, on, you know, this comes out of historic, they asked for historic money. Um, I know that we don't, everything is considered individually, we don't set precedent, but the precedent is that we draw from beyond the historic reserve when we, sometimes when we are funding something that's historic preservation. So, uh, and, and, you know, every time I look at their budget, <laughs> 100,000 doesn't do much on their budget. 300 doesn't do much on their budget. Um, and I'm still wondering why. So I'm I'm in a different place. I'm still wondering why we're funding it at all. I'm still there. Not 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 really moved to 100 or 300 yet. Uh, and and just since it came up, uh, I wanted to share this breakdown of uh, all of the funding on all of the, the categories from the beginning of the CPA in Northampton back in 2005 through the, the previous funding round in fall 2023. That, so all, all well above the required 10% and all fairly even at this point. They fluctuate, fluctuated round to round and over time, but at, at this point they're, they're pretty even. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Boy, that's, they are remarkably even, aren't they? 24 and 26%. Uh, Martha. Uh, I, I could go either way on this. I think, um, I just think it's more important that we send the proper message. So if it's 300,000 or 122,000, I'm happy to do what the others, you know, whatever, what others feel is best. Uh, let me. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like fluctuating around what Julia is like, kind of, am I moved to do the, do any, cause like it checks the box of historic preservation and like, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like I'm like the project preserves history in a very compelling way. Um, and that's just, I know it is, I know the structural aspects of the building, but it's just its just hard to sort of really point to saying it's like super clearly historic preservation. Um, but I think I'm, I came in here thinking through um, the logic for, for me personally is like looking at what they're talking about putting forth in the capital improvement program. It happens to be around $300,000. So like, I feel good contributing that again, like what Martha was saying as a contribution. Um, that feels more logical to me than like the historic aspect or whatever. Um, just because it's, yeah, the historic aspect feels a little bit amorphous at the moment for me generally. Great, I think we all had a chance to speak to that. So the motion on the floor was to Fund Memorial Hall at three hundred thousand uh, dollars, with a, a a message going out to them so eloquently um, uh, spoken to by Martha uh, and I think a number of other folks as as well. So that's the motion on the floor, um, and I think maybe let's entertain this as a formal motion and go around and vote on it. Is that I think that might make sense. 
Uh, Chris, uh, before, before we do, um, if it's defeated, Chris Tate, do you would you be interested in offering motion at the uh, the figure you had proposed? Yeah. The the motion is is at three hundred thousand. Any other motion can be made at any other amount of of money. Um, so Sarah, you disappeared. You're back. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I think we'll take us through a roll call on this one. I think that does that. I think that makes sense. So Sarah, you want to call us out? The motion. Right, so is... the motion on the second and the second on that one were was from who? Uh, Chris Hellman. The motion. I think Julia, you were the second, right? Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Okay. So roll call vote on that one. Uh, Lemmy. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Chris Tate. Yes. Chris Hellman. Julia? Yes, sorry. Uh, Martha? Yes. And Brian? Yes. Unanimous. Okay, so 300,000 going out, but still sort of in the, in this, in this shopping cart. Um, uh, are we done with the shopping cart? I think we have everything in it. Is that is that correct? So let me make sure that I understand what's in the shopping cart. Two hundred thousand for Valley CDC, sixty thousand for APR, um, forty seven one hundred four for Historic Northampton, nineteen thousand one hundred thirty one for Lathrop, seventy seven thousand for the park design, three hundred fifteen thousand. I'm sorry, three hundred thousand for Memorial Hall. 6,000 for the housing monitoring and 50,000 for um, Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity, which brings us up to a grand total of um, whatever 774,589 minus 15,354 is. Sarah, do you, can you do that? Uh, I, uh, I have too many tabs open, so. Hold on, I think I can. Six, Maybe seven hundred seventy-four thousand five hundred eighty-nine minus um, fifteen thousand three hundred fifty-four uh, seven hundred fifty-nine thousand two hundred thirty-five. That's what I'm getting. Is that what other people? Anybody else? Yeah. And then, and the final item is the bonding. Of the place Correct. Line. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And then we are bonding at 720,000 for the um, for the Ryan Road playground with a recommended three years, three year bonding uh, cycle. And so uh, the can city can city council or the bonding agent increase that that time period if it's favorable. Them? They, or can they would not be that? able to. Uh, so the, the council order would specify up to a maximum number of years. Um, and, but I'll have more information about that for the, the next meeting. And you know, bond council might flag something about this one that's unique or uh, have an updated um, interest rate or something like that. So I'll it, what I showed before was just a rough estimate so that Debt service going from two sixty one the first year down to two fifty four to two forty seven that it it would it will be a little bit different than that and I'll have those final numbers okay. for you so at the next we meeting kinda, so change we them. lose a little bit of flexibility though by saying three years instead of so it would be years. up to three years yeah yeah okay if people are comfortable with that that's fine so we have all of these items in the shopping cart. And I think, Sarah, we need to vote on all of them now. And we don't have to do them individually. We're just pushing the shopping cart through, pushing it through. Um, and you take us in on a, a roll call vote on that. Everyone understand what we're voting on? The whole kit and caboodle here. So someone would need to make a motion to approve the shopping cart items that uh, have been placed into it and, and have been discussed. I'm happy to do that. All right. 
Uh, I move to approve the items in the shopping cart. I believe there are nine altogether, one of which will be a bonded project um, for a total amount of, I didn't write it down, 700 uh, and... 759,235 plus the 720,000 in bonding. Thank you, Brian. I'm not going to repeat that. I'll second that. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Uh, Sarah? All right. And roll call vote on the shopping cart. Uh, Lemmy? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Chris Tate? Yes. Yeah. Chris Hellman? Yes. Julia? Yes. Martha? Yes. And Brian? Yes. Unanimous. Unanimous. Slap ourselves on the back, not slap. Pat ourselves on the back. Um, so the the only other component to this is uh, the need to submit our feelings about Memorial Hall in in writing and in verbal verbal perhaps to to those folks Sarah that you think are more are most um, important to hear this uh, and how how do we want to do that? Uh, uh, we have we have a nice few sentences from Martha. Um, do we want to do we want to ha have Sarah circulate at at another meeting a, a letter from us, um, articulating that, and then and then we submit that, and then and then do we also want to meet with folks at early on in the fall with from the city and articulate that again to them? How, how do we want to do this? Uh, Martha, you want to take yeah, a look? Yeah, I, um, I think that would be great to have something together for the next meeting for us to review. I'm happy to, um, you know, put, put a few thoughts or words down in writing for you, Sarah, to help you with that. Chris, you might want to, too, or Julia, or anyone who's, you know, been thinking about this a lot. Um, I think we all have been, probably more than we um, should have. Uh, and having something before the next meeting for us to re review would be great. And then um, I think it would be important to send the letter um, and then follow up with a meeting face to face. And I, I don't, unfortunately, I don't know who the appropriate individuals would be for that. I don't know who is in charge of financial strategy for the city. Um, Sarah, you can help us determine sure. that. Uh, so I guess it it would be helpful if anybody has thoughts that they would like to have included uh, in a letter, just email them to me and I'll distill them into one document and I'll get that out before the next meeting. And when That's do you need this, Sarah? Uh, I, in the next week? Yeah, I'll, it would, by next Wednesday would be great. Okay. Um, or and, next and Tuesday and then I'll get that and give me a day to pull it all together. Um, and then I guess, it, you know, probably meeting with Pat McCarthy, the central services director and the, the finance director would make sense. And, okay. and I can try and set that up as well. Uh, are there, there people on the committee who would definitely want to be involved in that? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I wonder if inviting them to one of our first fall meetings, is that too late? I think it's too late because there's going to be another application round happening before that. And the last thing we want to do is have to another, you know, humongous multi-million dollar application to deal with. Um, is inviting them to the next meeting too soon? I, that would be too soon, I think. So let's send the letter and then figure out how to proceed from, from there. Okay. And um, us getting stuff to you is not a violation of open meeting right no so don't send it out to everybody just send it to me i'll compile it into one document for us to edit all together at the next meeting and i will also have council orders that i will hopefully reflect everyone's discussion and feelings about these project to projects to vote on for the next meeting great that'd be really helpful um any further discussion about this round we're all going to sleep easily, easily tonight, I hope. Yes. Feeling okay about this or good about this. Great. Good. It's always so interesting for me to um, 
to hear and be swayed by what other people say. It's always such an interesting, in interesting meeting. My my feelings change from one person to another, which is always always interesting. Um, other business not foreseen when the agenda was published. Um, do we have a meeting date? Another meeting date set? Right, so May first would be the next one. So two okay. weeks from today. Okay. May first it is. Wednesday, May the first, our last CPC. Is Andy um, Katz, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask a question. I know Julia brought up some process questions, and I know I was sort of wondering about like a debrief or some sort of process, like a process question. Is that going to be part of next week's meeting? Or yeah. Month? So we do always typically include a, a debrief about the funding round. Um, and we can certainly include a discussion on the agenda about how to proceed with thinking about the, the two funding round schedule and, and what works and what doesn't work. Um, and, and again, I know I mentioned this at the last meeting, some of these bigger questions are uh, coming up at an opportune time since we do have to update the community preservation plan, which will do yes. through the summer and into the fall. Yeah, it's a perfect time to address Julia's and all of our issues around the, the uh, equity or inequity of two funding rounds, what that means. Um, yeah, thank you for bringing that up, Lenny, for reminding us of that. Any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? All right, 918, that's not too bad. I had us here to at least 1045, but <laughs> on that note, we will see you on May the 1st. Is there a motion to adjourn? That was Julia's hand, a second. Kevin, thank you so much, everybody. Have a nice rest of your April.